conflict and crisis in ministry. I need you to listen very, very well. Because there is no church, there is no ministry that will not pass through conflict. But it now depends on you to let it degenerate into crisis. This is a people business. Ministry is a people business. And wherever people are, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, there will be conflict. Even the disciples of Jesus, they have misunderstanding. There was a conflict among them as to who will be the leader, who will be the follower, who will be the greatest among them. And the Bible says, Jesus heard it, and he asked them, he confronted them, what were you debating about on the way when we were coming? And they told him, and he solved it for them. One of the minuses of pastoral training in Nigeria is that pastors and church leaders are not properly equipped to handle conflict and crisis. That's why in many, many, many churches, conflict have destroyed things. I saw it in our church, in the church that I came out from, and I've seen it across churches. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will deliver us. Either you like it or not, you will have to handle conflict in your life, in your ministry. Either family conflict, whatever, you will handle it. What am I trying to say? You need to hear and listen and study and prepare to handle conflict. Or else, no matter the anointing and the promises of God over your life and your ministry, conflict and crisis can destroy it. There is a church in Enugu. I won't mention the name of the church. It's in the papers. If you buy newspaper. Husband and wife were the owner of the ministry. Then one day a prophecy came out that they should go and hold their services in their camp, not in the church hall. The husband of the woman of God was against that prophecy. Now how can they go and hold service at uh, their camp for 14 Sundays so he didn't go and some people supported him the wife said that is a prophecy let's go and she went some people supported her when the 14 Sunday completed and they came back to the main hall of the church it became a ding dong affair that they had to call in police today Police are present in every service. And it is police that told them, this is the way police said to them, oh, hear me, oh. Your husband and his group, they will do their service from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. The wife and her group will do their own service from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. The same building, husband and wife, Conflict, crisis, is a great enemy of your work. Hello? Let me give you some statistics. The world is in conflict and crisis. And the church is not left out. Lots of churches have, have to grapple with one form of conflict or the other. Uh -huh. That's the story of the church in Enugu, Southeast Nigeria where the couple have allowed their marital conflict to spill over to the church. The police has to wait in and divide the time of service. The husband worship from his, with his group from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. While the wife worship with her group 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. every day, every Sunday. And the police have to be present oh, or else blood will flow. Of course, the husband and wife, they are packed up from the house of each other. 
<laughs> Today, conflict has festered in many churches simply because pastors and leaders are not prepared to handle conflicts and the damages are massive in churches. It's a fact that 25% of pastors have been driven out of churches, including me. I was driven out of my first pastorate. I remember. I remember very well. I was driven out. That was January 7, year 2000. No, 1991. Yes, 1991. And it's a spillover. The board of trustees of our church, they are trying to take over the church from the hand of our GO. So it's a boardroom quarrel. We, the normal members, we didn't know. We were fasting and praying, no. God promised many things, but those many things have never come to pass. So when the quarrel was so much, then I became a pastor, they transferred me to this church. But the, one of the board of trustees was a surveyor. And he was given that land by the landowners as a payment for his survey job for them. So he handed over that land to the church as a branch. There was no document, oh. it's just a gentleman uh, agreement. And a building was constructed. So the previous pastor there, when he resigned, he joined their group. He went and told them. But me, I didn't know. They just called me where I was an associate pastor. I think at Oworo Shoki. They say I should go there. So, and I went there January 7, 1991. As I resumed, when I got to the church, I saw their car. When I entered, two of them were already sitting on the altar. Of course, I entered. I prayed. One of them came to me. He beckoned on me and said, I should come out. I went out. With him, of course. He told me, so you are the one they brought here? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, as you can see, we have taken over. He said, I know you. I know you can pray. And you have all these uh, koro, koro, koro messages. Those say it's exact words. Uh, say, we know you can pray and you have these messages. He said, but let me inform you. You can't preach that message here. The Bible says, go, go ye into the world. You will have to go ye <laughs> into the world to go and preach that your message. Not here. Go and preach that your Korokoro messages to them. Not here. I say, yes, sir. I said, sir, can I wait for the service? He said, you can wait, oh, but you are not sitting on the altar. You sit at the back. I said, no problem. And I waited. And they did the service. How many members were there? At Omodi Atagba. At Iwure, at Iyologbo. 35. But they took over. And it's happening. There are a lot of Dickens said that, uh, that are driving pastors away. So there's conflict. There's conflict. Let me even read the statistics for you. According to statistics about conflict, since the beginning of the world, 4,500 wars have been fought. 4,500 wars have been fought. There are 4 billion people that have died in conflict, in wars, since the beginning of the world. Another one, the world, according to the Bible, is more than 6,000 years old now. There have been only 250 years of peace. The rest, one war or the other, one conflict or the other. Look at it in Nigeria. When we hear of uh, bombing, suicide bombers, and all those things, wars, we always thought it's far away. Look at it. Boko Haram has brought it home here. You can think of UK, you can think of Syria, you can think of many parts of the world, you can think of Iran, you can think of Iraq. Wars, conflict, conflict. May God save us. I say, May God save us. In the church, there will be conflict. Let's move on because I have a long way. 
Conflict in Latin is Latin in origin. It comes from the word con and flict. And the full meaning is conflict, meaning to strike together, to strike things together that will produce lights. It carries the image of sparks of fire that is evoked. It shows that conflict may start as a small spark of fire, but if not promptly handled, may degenerate into huge conflagration or billows of flame that may consume all of us. Conflict doesn't necessarily have to lead to crisis if properly handled. Did you hear that? Conflict doesn't necessarily have to lead to crisis if properly handled. That's why I've written a book on it. Many of those stories I'm telling you, they are in that book. I will tell you the price later. But I need you to see something. Conflict is natural. Combat is optional. There can be conflict. There can be disagreement. There can be misunderstanding. But to turn to combat is your choice. Depending on how you handle it. It's not all conflict that should become crisis. If properly handled, if you nip it in the bud, that small fire, if you kill it immediately, doesn't have to burn down the house. But our problem is, we watch it, we look at it, we ignore it, we don't even, it doesn't matter, it's nothing, until it will become big fire that will consume everybody. Conflict is natural. Look at it in your outline. It comes due to differences in human beings. Conflict is neutral. In itself, it's neither destructive nor constructive. Conflict is normal. It happens to us all, everywhere, depending, depending on how it is uh, handled. Conflict is supernatural. Yes, sometimes it's supernatural. It can be the trick of Satan. To ruin you and ruin your work. Get those facts very straight. Why some sections of the church have tried to sweep this truth under the carpet by faith confession, like I cannot have crisis in my ministry. I ha, conflict will never happen in my ministry. The reality is that conflict will come to any people, any work, any organization, any group of people at one time or the sincerely. I believe in faith confession. But even the person who made that confession, he said this some few years back. The, the next two months, he had a major crisis. Nobody is immune. Communities fight one another. Even children of the same mother, they have conflict. There are family conflict. There are city conflict. There are nation conflict. There are what every level. There will be conflict. What am I trying to say? It's the way we handle it that matters. But coming to the church now, let's look at the kind of conflict and crisis in ministry. Okay? Or before we go that, before we go there, let me tell you some of those scriptural passages. Now, if you read Genesis chapter 13, verse 5 to 9, you discover that between Lot and Abraham, there was a conflict. And they had to settle it before it leads to a big crisis. Because Abraham has to call Lot. Look, there should be no quarrel between me and you. We are brethren. Take left, I will take right. Take right, I will take left. You have to settle it before it becomes something else. Then, in Numbers chapter 16, we read of uh, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Men of renown. Men that were known in the congregation. They instigate a conflict. They instigate a crisis. And some people have to die. God had to kill some people. Numbers chapter 12. You remember that the Aaron and Miriam... Uh, the senior ones of uh, Moses, they instigate a crisis. God had to intervene. Then in Acts of Apostles chapter 15, there was a crisis also, and the church fathers had to sit down together and correct things, and put things in proper shape, and proper perspective. In Acts of Apostles chapter 6 also, you can see it there. The Bible said there was more money, there was complaining by the Christians, and the widows, widows of all people, and children, of all people, ah, they have to settle it. 
I call some people, look, let's address this issue. Because if you don't address it in time, it will destroy things. Then you can read in 3 John, 3 John verse 9 and 10, that Apostle Paul wrote a letter. He said in that church, in that particular church, there's a certain man called Diotrephes. The Bible says he loved to have preeminence among the people. Not only that, whoever is against him, you send them out of the church. Even when the apostle wrote letters and sent to the church, he cast them out. And he, the Bible says he was prating with malicious words against the apostle. What am I trying to say? It's there in the Bible and it is still there till today. So you and I, as leaders in the church, as the gathered people, we must be ready to look out for conflict. Wherever the small fire is, address it before it becomes a conflagration. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Now, let's look at kinds of conflict in churches. Both in my personal experience and ministry research over the years, I've come to discover various kinds of conflict and crisis in churches. Leadership crisis, that's number one. Who leads us? Who doesn't lead us? Tussle for leadership positions tied to authority. Yes. Successor. Who will succeed? Who will not succeed? I read about a man who did a wonderful job. Who did a wonderful job? He was a minister. It was a wonderful job in Kwara State. No, in Kogi. Kogi. And he, he, when he died, his most loyal associate, he installed him as his successor. In fact, he wrote things down. And that one happened to be a medical doctor. He had his own uh, practice, his own hospital, his own everything. But you know what? That late geo did not develop his wife and his children. And he didn't carry them along in the succession plan. So when he died, and they buried him, and this one became the, the successor, the children, they went and met elders in the town and said, this stranger has come to take away the property of our father. And they went and burned down his clinic and destroyed his company. The case is still in court. Too. Leadership crisis. Successor crisis. That's why it's good for a leader to choose his successor, install him, and help him kill all his enemies before you die. That's the Bible. That's what King Solomon and King David did. Though. Imagine that scenario. If King David had not killed all the enemies and make Solomon and give him his horse and his star, imagine what could have happened in his house. Children of the same mother. Hello? And Mo Moses installed Joshua while he was still here. So this one, we are waiting for leader to die. To die. Before successor. Now crisis, oh. And many churches will not survive crisis. Sincerely. But you know many leaders are behaving as if at least I would have gone. Anything can happen. Financial crisis. That's another one. Conflict on who keeps and spends money. This is the greatest one. There is conflict of money. 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 Most major conflict in churches, they center around money. Who handles the money? Who take what? Who doesn't take what? Should we bring the whole money to the headquarter? Uh -huh. What does the branches take? Or board of trustees? What would they share? What would they not share? You know, even this one that churches are starting universities, the conflict it will bring. You know, I often say, it. people will say, ah, because it's all about money. Should be all of us have seen now. In those days, they say the university is a mission school. Should be we have all seen that it's not mission school because they don't teach Bible there. They teach economics and all those things. And they use church money to do it. And there is money in that place. My brother, there is money. Ketra, money. Water, money. Igbe, money. Everything, money. You will see what will happen. Already it's happened. Part of the crisis of assemblies of God that is on ground. It started from that university. And check it. Baptists are also grappling with it. At the war. In fact, there was a time their student riots. They destroy things. Uh -huh. Let's be seen. Everything boils down to money. So the issue of money in church, when it is not clear, 
it will always lead to crisis. Let's move on. Associate leaders. Yeah, there are associate pastors. Disloyalty, rebellion, personal ambitions. As I say, we break away. They will start the leaders at their back. It's part of the crisis. So you should be careful. Who become your associate? Who you put into position? And the title you give to them? And all those things. Because either you like it or not, it's a crisis. Who? Doctrinal issues. Yes. Some people will try to introduce doctrines that you don't know. That's why it's good for a church leader. You must have your tenets of faith. What do we believe? You must write it down and stay within those tenets of faith. And be careful not to invite a preacher that will preach against your tenets of faith. And if a preacher preach against your tenets of faith, don't close the service. Preach another sermon to counter that tenet of faith. Am I talking to somebody? If you wait till another day, you are destroying things. Once he's saying it, start preparing a message where you are staying. That's why when you invite a guest speaker, don't go away. Sit around. Sit down. And listen to what he has to say. Especially the guest speaker. Ah, mama, not do 1940. Ah. It don't change. Even the person you knew last year, today, he has changed. Don't be so full of administration. Hey, I need to prepare his uh, honorarium and the food and everything. You are moving up and down. You didn't hear what he said. Ah. Guest speakers of today, they will have finished your church before you know. So stay around. And if you discover anything, just come up. You say it with all grace and maturity. We thank God for our guest speaker. He was my friend. He was my friend. And he did a beautiful job. I be you people, you didn't hear what he was saying. I'm sure many of you did not hear what he was saying. Concerning rapture that he's talking about, what he was actually saying is that Jesus is coming to rapture us. We should prepare any time. That's what he's saying. It's you people that hear another thing. Uh -huh. Blame the people. Like a friend of mine, he invited the guest speaker. The guest speaker came. He preached very well, though. I know the guest speaker. He preached very well, though. But I got to a point. He said, when it comes to breakthrough, I don't need God again. That I have, a lot, I have enough breakthrough to last me till eternity. I don't need God for breakthrough. I can point any point and I, will, I have my breakthrough. The host listened. When he finished, he just came there and said, my people, we thank God for the man of God. What a wonderful message. But there's something you people misunderstand in his statement. When he said, concerning breakthrough, I have all my breakthrough. I know many of you at that time, you were sleeping. What he was actually saying is that God is the source of all breakthrough. And that without God, we are nothing. I'll be back. I'll be back. Doctrinal issues. It has caused crisis in churches. One pastor traveled to U.S. and he met with some people that talked about uh, you can divorce and remarry. You can divorce and remarry. And this pastor had wanted to divorce his wife before because he doesn't know how to do it. So he invited that doctrine. When he came, he invited a friend to help him do the teaching. And as that one was doing it, people carried their Bible. And they left the church. And they never came back. Doctrinal issues. Pastor's family. Yes. There are pastor's family that bring crisis to church. Crisis. Bringing shame and corruption to the people. Yes. That's why. My words. This is the way I say it. And God help all of us. Don't allow your family or your marriage to destroy your ministry. And don't allow your ministry to destroy your it's important, my brethren. We need to strike a balance. And you pastor's wives, please, stop fighting for the position that God did not place you. And me say, I want to sit on the altar. When you are not a pastor, you are not a preacher, you are not an apostle, you are not an evangelist, you are not a teacher, you are not that. I want to sit on the altar. You know what will happen to you? 
May you not die before your time. If God give you a children ministry, why don't you go and sit there? If God give you a prayer ministry, why don't you go and hide there? He will never protect you where he didn't send you to. They push you, you remain standing, you stand getting by, and that is mommy. Mommy, mommy. But you are empty. There's nothing in there. You said they should call you mommy. I'm going for a label, that's all. What is Jordan? In one church, one pastor married one strange woman. And the lady came to church. He said, hey, I saw you pointed to one woman. Were well, you not the one that was receiving counseling from my husband the other day? I make all the faces. You didn't go away. You are a winch. And they started fighting. And they fought from 8 a.m. And stopped the fighting by 5 p.m. Inside church hall. By the time they stopped the fighting, they broke in all the shares. Because they were throwing it at each other. And it destroyed. And that one led to crisis. They had to sack the pastor. Old members. That's another one. Old members who cause crisis in churches. Because they want to, they have grudges. And they are scheming to take over the church. Okay. The ministry of members. When members begin to discover their ministry. <laughs> you know that's the, that's the bottom line of CAC crisis. When some people started uh, Agbalatura, when some people started uh, Kibachi, when some people started Wosem, the leaders were there. Oh, when they started, they didn't talk. They were doing it. They were doing church, inside church. They didn't talk. But when the thing has grown, they said they should close it down. Those ones cannot close it down because when they started, they were bringing something to Baba. Baba was receiving carry on my day. Well, well. Carry on my day. Uh -huh. They use money to keep Baba short. Now, when the thing has grown, you didn't talk. What's the lesson for us? Once you have a choir member that is waxing record, call him or her. Oh, yeah? How do we do it? Is he your person or our church? What's your name and whatever? And say to little. Once you have somebody that have a prayer ministry and you hear that uh, people are gathering in his or her house for prayer, call him or her. Oh. Is it another church so that we can celebrate you and anoint you and send you forth? Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. But when you come to the altar here, say, some people are organizing prayer meeting. Death will visit you. It's a lie. Death will not visit them. Some people are trying to do something. Some people are prophets. Prophets, they are gathering people. Hey, they will gather people. People are looking for vision. And somebody is a prophet in your church. Better call the person. Go, come here, come here. Witness this service. Come and be seen, Bishop. Why that joke say here? I got some Tory friend. He will tell you what he sees. He said, like, "Okay, okay, go and tell the people." He will tell them. No ministry, because you see, you can't gather hundred people, and God will not visit any one of them. It's the work of God. It's not your work, and God doesn't need your permission to give gifts to people. You are the one that will not display leadership. I saw that you have gifts and graces. I saw that you are seeing vision. God is talking to you. Yeah, come here. Who we'll arrange? Who we'll give him platform to preach? Because you know what? When you persecute that gift, that is the gift that will break your church. The person will go, some people will follow. Am I talking to somebody? Or you come to the altar. There's no other vision in this church. Anybody you are going to that is seeing vision is the wrong one. Don't go to them. <laughs> People will listen. They will be laughing at you. Let me tell you something I did in church. When I was pastoring that church I told you of. One brother started seeing vision. And on our Wednesday midweek service, some people would not come. When I made some investigation, they said they went to brother so and so house. What's happening there? They say he's seeing vision for them and praying for them. I said, wow. When I saw him, I said, well, what's happening in your house? And he said, some people came to me, oh, and then we were praying. We didn't know the time has gone. And uh, God was talking some few things to them. I said, okay. Is that the case? He covered it. I said, no problem. I was a young pastor, but God gave me this wisdom. I didn't know how I handled it, but I, I remember this, what I did. And when we are praying, when we gather the church, normally we do, every two, two weeks, we do three day fasting and prayer. We, the workers, will be in church. Then we finish on Sunday morning, other people come and join us. 
And this guy will be seeing vision, correct vision. But he wants to break the church. You know what I did? I didn't even fight him. I went for prayer. I said, Lord, I thank you for the vision you give to this brother. You did a good job, but you don't need my permission because it's your son. But he's trying to break the church. I didn't say collect it from you. Don't collect it. But give me my own. Give me my own. If I don't see with my eye, let me see with my mouth. I must see something. I must see something that will bring the heart of these people back to me. No, give me something, please. Or else he will take over the church. And you remember, as you say, I should be pastor in here. Oh, yeah, give me something. I just prayed that prayer. You know what I discovered happening? Uh, we, went, we came for that three days prayer again. As we are praying for somebody, because we got to a point in the prayer, we say people should kneel down, fall, fall, and we surround them and be praying. As we are praying, something just came to my heart. I said, you are winning at home. He said, yes, sir. I said, as we pray, the Lord has healed you. That brother now came. He said, ah, ah, yes, sir. I just saw that she's swimming at home. She rebelled. When the Coca Cola long got here. I said, there you are. You can see. I remember I was, we were praying for other people again. Ah, I didn't see vision. No. It just came to my heart. Shh. I just said, Mr. Man, yesterday you had a dream. Somebody was pursuing you. Ah, he said, yes, sir. I said, the Lord has delivered you with this prayer. And that brother came to me again. He said, that's what I just saw. I said, there you are. There you are. You can see now that you are not the only one seeing vision. You know, by the time that one happened, I remember our Sunday service. As I was to preach, I just felt I should not preach. I felt we should pray. It's just a feeling. I just felt we should pray. So I said, ah, I'm not preaching. Let's pray. Let's pray against accident. And we prayed. This brother came. He said, sir, I'm surprised at you. I said, how? He said, that is what God showed me when I was praying. I said, there you are. Out of the mouth of two witnesses. You know, in one month, the whole church started coming to me. Yes, sir. See vision for us. They said, sir, show you the sea. I said, I can see. It was there I started saying, if I don't see with my eye, I can see with my mouth. That's how I rendered the brother. If I have not handled it that way, he will have broken the church. And people say I'm persecuting him. So when it comes to ministry of members and gifts, that's why as a pastor, you cannot remain as a dullard. If they are seeing vision, you too must see. You may not see it in the whole length of our, you must see something, sir. You must see something. And then, out of ten, Timothy, if I correct it, I do well. I do well. If you are doing all, all ten of them, doesn't need to correct. I pray for somebody, the person fell down. He says, I'm not healed. I say, Hallelujah. At least I didn't pray in my name. They are too bad. Even Jesus, he touched somebody's eyes. He said, what do you see? He said, I see men like trees. He touched him the second time. If Jesus had to do it two times, who is me? Oh yeah, need that again. I say, if I pray, God heal you. Amen. If he doesn't heal you, it's not my problem. Tell me, man, to shet of You are blessed. Okay, let's move on. Root cause of crisis. You know, those are little, little things that has caused crisis. Yes, sir. Those are little, little things. Guest speakers, barrenness atmosphere. When people are not getting blessed in your church, it can lead to crisis. When people are losing their home, they are losing their job, they are losing their finances, they are losing their career, it will lead to crisis. Members will start talking to each other that this church is a barren ground. Though. So that's why you need to become a fruitful minister. You need to become a green minister. What are the root causes? Of course, there is a spiritual side to reach. You can see there, the devil that hates the church. We instigate crisis. At the same time, there are human errors. Human errors. And look at the human errors. When leaders break trust with people, when you break trust, you can no longer be trusted. You became the problem. It will lead to crisis. Scandals of immorality and financial scam. It will lead to crisis. Let me tell you, my brethren, if you are an immoral minister and you are a chief, there is no way that church will survive. You may manage it for years. But it will crash. It will crash. Check it. 
Check it. Check it. I can tell you stories. Check it. You are an immoral person, a shepherd. You are mating your sheep. You are sleeping with members, somebody's wife, somebody's daughter, your secretary, whatever. I can bet you it's just a question of time. It will leak out. Or you are stealing church money. You are the offering. You are working the books. You are doctoring the books. The one they, they say you should bring at headquarters. You don't take it. You doctor it. That work will crash. Hello? If you don't know anything, check American preachers as example. You know, they say we should not talk of Nigerian preachers. Okay, let's talk about American preachers. How many of them? How many of them? I see around. When you are involved in crisis and all, it's the way down. When you become an immoral minister, I can bet you it's the way down. Scripturally, experientially. In Lagos here, let me show you one. In Lagos here, at least I can recollect. In Lagos here, you remember? 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000. There was one church in Lagos. Around Lekki area. You remember? The man had an aircraft too. But that aircraft was towed along the Gondo Road some few months back. They towed it to Badagri. You didn't read it in the papers. That broke down in the middle of the road. That's the aircraft of the man of God. That was a church of 10,000 members. Somebody did a research who was close to them. The offering alone and the tithe in a month was 40 million by then. But what did they use it for? Extravaganza, extravaganza, extravaganza. By the time it died, around 2004, the church has reduced from 10,000 to less than 100 members. Since it died now, the wife took it over. The church has not come back home. When you go on Lekki Expressway, you see by the right. Massive structures, but devoid of people. There's another church around that time also. They used National Stadium here. You remember that speaking in tongue? Skolaba, 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 Skolaba. Hey, not he? he impregnated his secretary. Somebody that know him very closely, a father in law, the Lord is here. He walks around 11 p.m., 12 no, 12 midnight. The father in the Lord was telling me one day that he came in a couple of about maybe four or six cars, almost the same plate number. And he said, Why are you walking in the night? A good person doesn't walk at night. He says, yes, sir, that's the time I can walk. And what did he come for? Daddy, pray for me. And that one said he warned him. Say, hmm, hmm. In Lagos area alone, he had more than 400 churches. But when he fell into scandal, he ran to Europe. All those 400 churches are closed down. Even the headquarters at Igamu, that expressway they are doing has cut it to half. We have examples. We have examples. Have American preachers, preachers almost everywhere. Is it Zambia? Is it South Africa? Or wherever? It's the same thing. Once you are an immoral minister, once you are a chief, a robber, you only appear for some time. Your son will said at noon. It's not a cause, it's a reality. And it will precipitate crisis. You may not leave the church, but God will send out his own people. Re relations and family members, when you have them as your vital associates, they will lead to crisis. Be careful of churches. That you start family gospel church of jesus christ of nazareth wrong foundation when you start the church in crisis yes when you start the church in crisis yeah as a result of rebellion treating serious issues with kids gloves that's another fault that leads to crisis you know when when issues are being brought to your attention but you don't you just say let's forget it let's forget it i bet leave that one leave that one my brother you are precipitating crisis Double standard in dealing with cases and secrecy about church financial dealings. Yes, when there's double standard, this one does this. We discipline him or her. Another person does it, but because it's a one, one, one animal is more equal than another. George Orwell, animal farm, we forgo that one. Injustice, you are bringing crisis gradually. Surrender authority to foundation members. Yes, when your foundation members have taken over. They are taking over the church, the trustees and the boards. They are the owner. The pastor is nothing. You are surrendering to crisis. You are participating in crisis. Quick coordination of too many associates. Yes, when you love to ordain people, your hand is scratching you. One day you ordain people. I often told the story of a friend who started a church. Um, two months later, 
he wants to ordain two pastors, six deacons. He came to my office. I said, my brother, you are making a terrible mistake. He said, no, it is the Lord that spoke to him. And you know, when you say it's the Lord, what can I do? I'm not the Lord, and I can't travel to heaven to say, Baba, Baba, Sheba, Soro. He went ahead and ordained two pastors and six deacons in a shop. Yeah. And he didn't do the ordination by himself. He asked a bishop to come and do it. So, spiritually speaking, the people are not carrying his anointing. They are carrying the, the, the anointing and the ordination of the bishop. And if I know that bishop at all, now another story be that one. Well, to call long story short, less than six months, the church closed down. Because those two pastors, they were fighting. Who will preach? Who will not preach? And the deacons were saying, Whoa, those of you that are pastors, you are joking, no? It's the same day they ordain us. The same anointing oil. The same hand. So they just call us deacon. Call you people pastor. Now name change, oh. All of us now the same, oh. Bringing many strange bedfellows together. Yes. People that their stomach are not the same. People that are not in unity. People that can't work together. We just put them together. In the name of many, many people. We will destroy the work. Favoritism ethnicity, and respect of persons. When leaders begin to practice, these are things that lead to crisis. These are things to... Starting from one side, incapable and competent, vengeful transfers, injustices in administration. Yes! Like one person was, ask, was asking a question at Akure. He said, one person was taken to a church, a, a barren ground, and he, his wife, and two other workers were asked to start a church. That pastor fasted and prayed, spent his money, and in three years, he had about 100 adult members. It was then the denomination brought a past, another pastor. They say, that one is his senior pastor. This one is a full-time, that one is a part-time, but he has money, and is highly educated. He said he didn't even quarrel. He accepted because it's a denominational policy. So they brought him and they were pastoring. But just like my story that I told you, that's what happened. Members will come and give testimony that they saw that pastor that started the church, that one that has fasted and prayed, came and prayed for them in their dream and they got healed. Almost every testimony, people refer to that young pastor. This senior one went and reports that that junior one does not allow him to pastor the church. And you know what did the authority do? The one who started the church, they transferred him to go and begin again. And they took this one to what he did not suffer for. That's how denomination precipitate crisis. You know, and when it happens, and happens, and happens, and happens, some people have anger, they have bitterness, they have all those things against church authority. Before you know it, God will start to withdraw gradually. If you allow me to say it, there is too many injustices in Nigerian churches. When it comes to transfer, when it comes to promotion, when it comes to church administration, there's too many biases, there's too many ethnicity. And that's why we are having crisis here and there. May God have mercy on us. Let me, how do leaders handle crisis? I'm almost rounding up. How do we handle crisis? Total war. Total war. Hardline stand, destructive. Fight to finish. Total war. Have you seen churches where they carry placard? Yeah. They carry placard. We no go agree, oh, we no go agree. And people protest. People protest. Total war. Second one, civil war or cold war. Some people don't fight total war, but they fight cold war. Secret detestation of each other, pretending but fighting each other within. Both of us can sit on the altar. We are still working together, but our stomach are different. We use stomach to fight each other. And we bite each other at the back. Cold war. But we shout hallelujah together. Hallelujah. But inside. <laughs> Number three. Tribal and intertribal war. Ethnicism. Division. Disunity. Along tribal lines. Language barrier and sectional bigotry. 
is in our churches. Ethnicism. You are from Igbo. You are from Yoruba. You have, even among Yoruba, there is difference. Now, Akure people. Now, your people. Now, Ogun people. Now, Undo people. Now, Ikichi people. Now, Kwara people. We do it in church. It's just that I don't want to mention, but we do it. It's happening. There are churches that if you are not from this lineage, you are not from this tribe, you cannot get to the position. Even though you are eminently qualified, even if God says now you, they say now lie. You can't get there. Intertribal wars. Number four, gorilla war. That's the way we handle crisis. So, gorilla war. Causing havoc with surprising tactics. Fighting and doing damage. From where? That's what Boko Haram is doing. Gorilla tactics. You don't know them. They are among us. But we don't know them. And it's happening in churches. That's how, how we handle crisis. They are enemy within. They will be causing a lot of mayhem. They will be writing a lot of anonymous letters. Anonymous petition. But you won't know their name. They won't put their name. And they will be causing a lot of havoc inside church. He, that is crisis. Number five. Jojo is my idea. Because it says it's better to Jojo than to war war. And the fifth one is only the correct one. Every other one is wrong. Even the best of wars, they are set to on the round table. They are not set to on the battlefield. So if there are crises in our churches, we need to set to it. We need to come to reconciliation. We need a round table discussion. We need forgiveness. And we need rearrangement and realignment. That's the only right one. The first four ones, they are wrong. Now before I tell you proper handling of Christ, crisis, let me give you the power of crisis in churches. If you allow crisis and conflict in your church, what will it do for you? Number one, it renders progress unattainable. When there is conflict and crisis, either leadership crisis, you will not progress. The church will be stagnant. Number two, it will kill your growth. Any aspiration for growth will be killed until we settle the crisis. I know churches today, they are struggling and struggling. Why? Is the crisis in leadership? There are crises we have swept under the carpet. We cover it. It will limit the growth of the church. Number three, it will allow demons to infiltrate the church. It will give opportunity for demons to infiltrate. Then you will see people with demonic spirit. They will take over the church, and calamities will be happening. People will be dying. Accident will be happening. A lot of evil things. It will be happening in the church because crisis have opened the door. Then number four, there will be the disunity and there will be sectional interests, ethnic interests. People will kill. People will form. Say this is our people. This is our people. They persecute our people. It's because of tribal thing. And hey, become tribal. We we'll forget the unity in Christ. That in Christ, all of us are one. But we we'll start. Hello? You know another, another mark of crisis? Premature death. People will be dying prematurely. If I mention Christ Apostolic Church, in their crisis, 25 years, many people have died. Many pastors have died. Many die in accident. Many die in calamity. And I remember one, one bishop. One bishop. He slept with his secretary. But he will not admit in time. People were asking him. He will not admit in time. Yeah, the secretary was singing, singing, singing. He And the man was denied. But the lady was singing. You know, in the course of denial, 10 pastors died. 68 churches broke away. Crisis. It leads to premature death. Young members will die. Accident will happen. Calamity will happen. Once people in leadership, we have issues. We don't resolve it. I can assure you, my brethren. I can assure you. That will open the door for the enemy to. Then it will lead to corruption of Christians. Even Christians will be corrupted. Many Christians will backslide because they will misuse their mouth. They will support what they should not support. They will propagate lies and deceptions. Therefore, 
they are corrupted. They are backslidden. The spirit of God will lead them. That's why when leaders, when churches are in crisis, it precipitates a lot of backslidings. And some people will not be able to stomach it. That, ah, our leader that preached the gospel to us. Look at the way he's talking. Look at the way he's behaving. They will say, ah, I will not follow this leader. And some of them will backslide. Crisis. It brings a lot of damages to church. Hello? How many numbers have I given you? Seven. It will debar the promises of God from coming to realization. No matter the promise that God gives to that church, I will do this, I will do that, I will do this. Once we allow conflict and crisis to take root, that promise will not come to pass. It will be delayed. Because God is not the author of confusion. Number eight. The church will eventually close down. If the church doesn't lock its doors, people will leave their mass. In some cases, it will remain the Geo and his family. Let me remind you a story. When I was pastoring, I had a deacon. He was my only deacon, an elderly person. He's late now. He has been with the Lord. Very good Christian, a very wonderful man, and a true father. He's an iron bender. He sells iron and all these windows and all those things. That's what he does. One day he told me a story I've never forgotten. I went to his shop. I went to greet him. Then he said, Pastor, Pastor, you know I saw something today. I said, what's that, Baba? He said, two young men brought an iron signboard, signpost to him. They say, Baba, you buy iron and buy signposts and uh, whatever. He said, yes. He said, Baba, come and buy this signpost. He said, when he came out and looked at the signpost, there was the name of a church there. And he said, but this is the signpost of a church. That's the name of the church there. Why do you people want to sell the signpost of a church? He said, one of them answered. I said, ah, Baba, it's our signpost. When we started that church, we contributed this signpost. Some people contribute share. Some people contribute organ. Now that we have fought, we remove our signpost. The, the people contribute organ, carry their organ. <laughs> Stand up on your feet. Carry your outline. Carry your outline. Stand up and hold your outline. Two more. Oh yeah? Proper handling of conflict. Let me read it for you. It must be emphasized that conflicts don't necessarily have to degenerate into crisis. If they are properly, maturedly, and quickly handled with prayer and uh, wisdom. Once you see the fire there, in fact, somebody told you that uh, what and what and what is happening, don't say, uh, I'll be watching. Don't watch. Call the person. I hear this, I hear this, I hear this, I hear this. What about it? Yeah, let's talk. You need to quickly address it or else. Okay? The leader must not be the problem or part of the problem, but must be the solution. Every competent leader must provide solutions to conflict and crisis in ministry. And here are ways to do it. Develop your capacity to handle problems. Because if you don't handle them, nobody will. You know one thing about crisis? It's your responsibility as a leader. If you don't handle it, nobody will handle it. It has happened to me. Even we that are running ministry. 2005, 2006, I will never forget in my life. This church growth you are today, it will and be. It was so great. We are losing people. And people were saying a lot of things. My also said to not you people. Not you people. 
In fact, it degenerated to a point. You remember that plane crash in, in Abuja? That plane crash in Abuja. The one that the Sultan died. ADC. The one that the Sultan of Sokoto died in. At Abuja. Good. In the manifest of the plane, there was an Akijon there. That was our time of crisis. When the newspaper carried that manifest, and people saw Akijon, my associate to people that preach here and we do things together, they started congratulating one another. He's gone. That is me. They say, I am gone. And they call some father and say, We are sorry for Akijon. No. Hey, I'm on the phone. In fact, one of them called me. When he called me, I said, Hello. He said, Is that you? I said, Angels don't die in heaven. Huh? Money, I bought a lot of money. Huh? He said, So you are alive? I said, Where, where? I didn't travel to Abuja. I said, That Akijon is a fake one. This is the genuine, correct? And he said, I thought you are dead. I said, I didn't die. And I will not die. I am on Kwebu. I am unpayable. I am unbebable. I am uncrashable until I finish my work. But that's crisis for you. Not that I took money from their church. It's because uh, we should be sharing the money. I say no. We'll use the money to be growing the ministry. That's the secret of everything. So when crisis come, even children of the same mother, you kill each other. Until I was bold enough, I told her, I said, don't stop coming here. Don't come here again. And he said, ah. I said, I don't want to see you here. Ah, Baba Falani is here. He can testify. They even went and reported me to Baba. They went and told stories. One good thing Baba did, Baba called me. He said, this man you are telling his story. How can we call him? Eh? So he called me. I was there. I went with register. We sat down. They told stories. I kept quiet. Baba said, we are saying your own. I said, this one, this is it. Baba asked them this, asked them this. Baba asked them. They couldn't talk. Baba said, hey, eh? so you people, this is what you did. I said, well, sir. That's what did. I said, ask him. He went and started school. He was teaching our lectures, awarding our certificates. Using our outlines. Ah, Baba said, Mbo? Eh, he said his old outline. Ah, did you take permission? He said, no. I said, I'm not threatened by them. But they just want to pull down the ministry. I mean, I won't allow that. Because they have their church. If this one dies, they can return to their church. Me, I have nowhere to return to. So I'm not going to open my eyes that somebody will destroy this one. Never. If that is the only fight I will fight, I will fight that one. I thank God there was another father there. That one said, well, let us settle this matter. Let these people be going their way. Let Akijon be going his way. And that's how we settle it. Today we meet, we shake hands. How are you, sir? Bless you, sir. But I'm a... Your ministry will not collapse. Put down your outline. Let's pray. Let's pray. Every crisis, every crisis, every conflict that want to destroy my ministry, I destroy them today. Can you open your mouth and pray?